Thank you. Uh, despite COVID and other unfavorable inf circumstances, the activity of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences have continued in recent years under the great impetus of its president, Joachim von Braun, to whom we wish to pay tribute and thanks, as well to as the Chancellor Ramanathan, who organized this meeting uh, with this uh, discipline and skill, papers and meeting of the expert on ecology, food, paleoanthropology, oceanography, building ecology, scientific publication, cultural events, speeches in person and virtual, as well as council meetings, new chancellor and new membership are a brilliant demonstration of the vitality of this institution, which is decisive for the common good of humanity. The highly specialized, specialized issues in resilience of people and ecosystem on the climate stress is currently being studied. As you can imagine, I will not go into the technical question or into the possibilities of it application. I prefer to stick to my studies and make a general consideration of virtuous attitude that should guide resilience under the umbrella of sustainable development and climate stress. Maybe an epistemological question with some vision of philosophy and theology. Sorry. But we need with we need also a little theology in this situation uh, of the world that you speak with a crisis of climate, the crisis of COVID, the crisis of the war, the difference uh, of the people, and the inequality, et cetera, et cetera. I think that we need to, uh, I also say this in a tense about the theology of Aristotle, we need also to have some openness to the providence of God. So. Two attitudes for resilience. Let's highlight in the more general field of scientific research for resilience, two attitudes that it seems should characterize the scientists and the academic, and especially the scientist who is a Christian, or a not Christian, but a person who somehow believes in the existence and providence of God. On the one hand, it must honestly consider the question of the early future of the humanity and the planet Earth, and as a responsible person, help to prepare for it, preserve it, and eliminate the risk in a resilient way, especially in the current situation of, of anthropic climate stress, wars, poverty, and treats of nuclear catastrophe. I believe that this solidarity with present and future generations, properly understood, is a form of high charity and sincere love to which many human beings are sensitive today within in the framework of ecology. However, virtuous resilience with regard to this attitude, must be ecological and not ecologist, or let's call it grim. Uh, such exaggerating can be called device of doing nothing, nilagere. That is, consider nature as a king of museum where the muses live a museum to be kept and guarded like the muse museum custodium who merely clean the masterpiece. Nor it is this attitude also is not 
the meaning of the Heideggerian imperative, be custod of being, be custod of the natural. I've said the book many times. At the same time, therefore, the scientist must be animated by an attitude of confidence that nature holds secret potentialities that is, it is up to science, intelligence, and human love to discover and put at the service of humanity in order to achieve the project that is in the mind of the creator. However, virtuous resilience with regard to this act, active attitude does not mean doing anything. If in the first ecology attitude of green solidarity, the mistake was in doing nothing, here the mistake is in doing without taking into account the real potential of nature and the work of the human beings on it. In short, the virtuous attitude in resilience leads between two vices extremes, that of the doing nothing because it is considered the nature does not need the intervention of science, like many people that not want to take the vaccine, for example, or that of considering nature as material from which any develop can be made to infinite without taking into account its real potentialities and laws. So for a reappropriation of the, of the notion of act and potency of Aristotle, this led me to consider resilience in an epistemology project and a, in a form of truth which can find a real foundation in the categories of being that Aristotle puts under the notion of potency and act. On the one hand, also the EPCC definition of resilience used the notion of capacity three times. That is capacity of a social system to absorb disturbance, capacity of for self-organization, capacity to adapt to stress and change. In short, the language of potency and action has not ceased to underline the representation of the human experience. Aristotle observed in the metaphysics that almost everything that falls on the experience moves and changes. There is progress or return. Bodies change place and move in space. They change in magnitude and qualities, show increase or decrease, are destroyed or produced. Because in the living, there is death and life, sleep and vigil. In those and those with knowledge, ignorance and knowledge, memory and oblivion. Oblivion. From the analysis of these events, Aristotle started the theory of act and potency as the foundation of his world philosophy, trying to solve the problem that has proved insoluble by, the, by his predecessors, especially the Parmidian physicist and Plato. Let's suppose statue of good Mercury, say Aristotle, there was a time when wood or marble was not a statue or even something else with a figure. And after it becomes a statue, it receives something in itself that it did not have before. Now, air and water are not statues either, nor do they have that stable figure. But neither can they have one they are not susceptible of stable modification. Therefore, in the world of art and science, some things are susceptible of artificial modification, stable and definite modification, and others are not susceptible of this. 
Marble, marble is not a statue, but it can become one. In the world of living, the seed and the age are not the oak or the chicken, but they can become them. The architect, Lippin, does not build, but they were he can build. Aristotle can this capacity to act, dynamism. That new reality in which the movement or develop ends he called act, energy. In this way, being as potency, beginning, allows us to include change within being. That is to say, the change, the develop have a reality, contrary to Parmenides' prohibition that say, and also not only Parmenides, but also today many economists, that the change is an apparent. Because potentially it's a genuine mode of being, change, motion, develop, array through being. But when asked what sort of being is motion, we are referred back to the dialectic definition of motion in the physics, namely the full mean of what exists potentially is so far as it exists potentially. Aristotle does to say to provide to motion a full fledged ontological status, but at the cost of a dialectic real situation, for it is neither act nor potential separately, but in place a certain coexistence of both an act and still remain potency. At this point, it seemed important to me to highlight, highlight a first corollary that emerged from his realistic approach, which is valid for our team of develop and resilience. For there to be movement or develop, it is necessary to start from a real power or capacity and not a logical or purely rational one. A certain philosopher, economist, or scientist claim today, which does not take reality into account. In other words, this means that for there to be developed and res resilient, one must start from a natural reality or ecological system, as say the definition, capable of being in potential to develop or from a mind of social system, or a team of scientists that has the science in act capable of producing develop or resilience in nature. In this sense, the philosophical dictum of Parmenides is full valid. For nothing come nothing. If nothing can come out of nothing, according to Parmenides, nothing can do so without a real power, according to Aristotle. Without a real principle, there is no moving, no develop, no resilience. So, in other hands, in the Aristotelian interpretation of this, the, the instance of change, movement or develop, is generally identified with the end, with telos, which sometimes represent the final cause of the things. And this is very important also today because as to have a real develop a resilience, we need to consider the potentiality of the things and the law of the natural things. But also we need to consider the end of the develop. And, and in this sense, uh, it's very important the idea that in the frame of globalization and the existence of only one planet to house all human beings, the need for develop to be sustainable fits well with the Aristotelian idea of the goal, of the God, of the good, and to end. 
The adjective sustainable put a term to develop, which is that of being able to maintain the, poten the potential use of natural resource for the satisfaction of human needs, especially for the future generation. Instead, in the context of the human development and send a NASBOUND discussion of capabilities that take from Aristotle, an interpretation from the change in Aristotle would point out that their approach to capabilities lacks something. The consideration of actualization as the end for which capability exists. In sense approach, the end of develop is the expansion of the human capabilities. However, since animals do not see in order to see, but have tech in order to see, the expansion of human capabilities is only desiderable and value, valuable if it is direct toward the actualization of those, of those capabilities. In Aristotle, on the contrary, the end is the happiness of the human being, which must be recharged to the develop of his capacity, capaci capabilities by means of the virtue. Their mere expansion of, capa of capacities does not produce the end of the happiness. And I try to hear, I'm sorry, to establish what is the difference between sustainable development and resilience. Because we know we have the problem of sustainable development, and in this moment, we speak of resilience. And what is it? There are something in common, but we need to have more clear the difference. Now, we can ask that it is different between sustainable develop and resilient. According to Aristotle, the word virtue refers to the extreme limit of power. Now, natural power is, in one sense, a principle of action. And in another sense, it is power of resisting corruption, Aristotle. And this is the more end or more limit of the power. And since the first meaning is more common, the term virtue or potency, we have reserved it for the principle of sustainable development in the sense that this is what enables development. But so far as denoting the extreme limit of power, which sense is more specific, it is applied to an special attitude of principle, namely resilience, to which it belongs to stand firm against all kinds of disturbance and stress. Thus, the term resilience can be taken into two ways. Firstly, as if it is simple, they not resistance in develop, and in this sense, it is something general, or rather a condition of all developed, since it is requirement of all developed to resist in all its movement. Secondly, and more pertinently, resilience can be seen as the wisdom and willingness to endure and sustain in those things where it is most difficult to be resilient and constrained. Constant. That is, in certain grave dangers, such a global warning, war, and famine, and survival. Thus, EPC say resilience is absorbing disturbance while retaining the same basic structures and ways of functioning as well as cell organization and adaptation to stress and change. And I finish with a project of 
resilient project, scientific project. Over and above the different verific verification procedures, there is funding act in place in Sicily or in Athens at a time that 50th century before Christ that initiated the very project of science, episteme, of a form of truth. That is very important. The science is a form of truth. A chair of this, uh, it belongs to the notion of truth even to create the irreversible. So in this moment in Greece, uh, begin an, 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 an kind of truth that we, we can say is science, that is different of philosophy, and is different of theology, and is different of religion. And, but it's a form of truth. And it's a form of truth to reveal something that not reveal religion, that not reveal philosophy, and <laughs> is part of the truth. And this is the reason, and I say that it's a project because in part is discovered this, and in part is not discovery. And the science of resilience is a new science that needs to continue this project. Uh, in the line of this reality of potentially an act. So uh, I want to finish to say that this hope in the author of the, in the author of the nature, that is in God, to put this potentiality in the nature, and in the same time in the human spirit that have the possibility to read this potentiality that have in the nature. These two, these two things, these two potentialities, these two projects uh, can give some, uh, some energy and hope to the research in, in our time, in particular in this time of these problems and in approach of resilience for this problem. Thank you very much.